in the energy, power, and climate change topic, um, if you look at your data booklet, you'll see a lot of equations, but they're not actually labeled what each of them does. And usually the questions that are asked on exams are actually very straightforward as long as you know the equations really well. So what I'm going to do then is go over these equations uh, just one by one and make sure that we know what each of them means. So we'll do a quick little intro to what everything means in the equations. I think that's really useful. So this very first one right here says power equals half times a times rho times v cubed. This equation, okay, that has to do with um, a type of energy. Or Well, here we're talking about power generation. But this actually comes from wind. So this, for example, could be some sort of, um, you know, we could have some sort of wind turbine like they love to have in Denmark. I'm going to try to draw this in 3D here. It's a little bit difficult. But let's say we have this thing right here and it's connected and it goes on, to, this is onto the ground here. What happens is this thing, um, it's got a bunch of uh, these little uh, pedals, I guess you could say, but this is basically some sort of, um, well, people used to call them windmills, but it's a wind turbine. And what happens then is air comes in, you know, this way, and the air actually has a, you know, and we're going to assume it's sort of a, a, a cylinder of air coming in and hitting this thing and causing this thing right here to turn. Of course, that gives you power. So the amount of power that you get then is related to a couple things. First of all, A. A is going to be, maybe we should just define these things. So A is going to be the area of the air. Well, it's actually technically it's the cross sectional area of the air. In other words, we have to take the, if we see like a column of air coming into this uh, turbine, you have to take the area, you know, if you sort of cut it and you'd have a nice circle, just take that area and that's going to be what you use for A. So in that sense then it's measured in meters squared. Well then we have rho. And rho is going to be the density. Rho is almost always used to denote density here, except in um, uh, topic 5, we use it to mean resistivity. But in this case, rho is a density. And that's going to be the density. In this case, you just got to think, well, density of what? Well, density of the air. So we're going to measure the density of the air. Uh, normally it's going to be in kilograms per meters cubed, but it could be lots of other things. But um, that's going to be the density of the air. And V is going to be the speed of the air. And that's going to be in meters per second. So that's how you can deal with this. By the way, the power is measured in watts, always. Okay, always power is measured in watts. Or you could also see, remember we talked about power a few times, power is also energy over time. So power is also joules per second, that's also fine. But you, normally we say power is in watts. Now here, the second one here, it looks a lot like it. So it's worth pointing out here that the difference is, well, there's a G going on. Um, so this one right here is actually for wave power. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a helicopter flying overhead, but oh well. Uh, so this is for wave power. This is really cool because what they do here, um, as waves go up and down, they actually have uh, the waves, you know, uh, basically um, going through a column of water. And in that column of water, they actually set up another turbine. So basically it's like uh, instead of wind, you know, coming in sideways and turning a turbine, now we have a turbine set up straight up and down and it's powered by the power of the waves, which means as the waves go up or down, they'll actually turn this turbine, kind of turn it one way, turn it the other way, turn it one way, turn it the other way. It is a super cool way to get power, because technically it's actually powered by the moon, which sounds really weird, but it's because, um, I mean, at least uh, if we did it with large scale things like the tides, you could say it's powered by the moon. Because of course, as the tide goes up, uh, and then the tide goes down. If you live somewhere near the water, you'll know that. You get two high tides each day and two low tides. That's actually because the Earth is roughly a sphere. We're covered with a bunch of water, and that water is actually being gravitationally attracted and sort of stretched out by the moon. 
See, the moon also has a lot of gravity, so it attracts uh, the water. So the water is actually able to sort of stretch out a little bit. That uh, helicopter is getting really loud. But. So uh, we have uh, wave power is actually really, really cool for that. So now all we have to do then is look at what each of the different letters means. So A, uh, in this case it's going to be not the area, but it's going to be the amplitude. So that's going to be in meters. So amplitude means, you know, like how much this whole thing goes up and down. It doesn't just have to be uh, tides. It could just be regular waves going up and down. So we look at the amplitude of that wave. Remember, if it goes up and down, the amplitude is a distance from the middle to the top, let's say, or from the middle to the bottom. So we say amplitude there. Uh, rho is going to be this time not the density of air. It should make sense then if we're in the water. It's density of water. So that's going to be measured again in uh, probably um, uh, kilograms per meters cubed. Then we have G, which is acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So that's 9.81 meters per second squared. And we also have V, that's going to be this time the speed, not of the air, but of water. So it's going to be how fast the water goes, and that's going to be in meters per second. So that's how we can actually deal with uh, what goes on with wave uh, power. And again, the power is measured in watts. So that's, uh, I just maybe want to separate these there, just so we can see them being different. Now we have this third one here. It says I equals power over A. That's what it looks like on your uh, data booklet. So what does that mean? Well, this one, first of all, this has to do with, I like to think, well, I, that's intensity. So that's solar power. This has something to do with how uh, stuff from the sun reaches us. Um, I don't really like the format of this one because if you look at the astrophysics option, we have a much better version of this equation. Uh, just off to the side, I'll show you the actual better version of the equation goes like this. So actually in astrophysics, we use this equation, which is the apparent brightness is equal to the luminosity of a star divided by 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance from us to the star. Sometimes they put a d here instead. I'll explain this in a second. So what this means here is this is the intensity of the light. In other words, um, how bright the light from the sun appears to us. And it's measured based on the power of the sun. In other words, um, what, the, what the sun actually kicks out in watts. Now, of course, a power is all about uh, joules per second, right? But a power is measured in watts. And we divide that by the surface area that you're having it reach. In other words, we're saying, you know, how many watts per meter squared are, uh, is being uh, reached, I guess you could say, from the sun. In other words, the sun's sunlight is very, very uh, intense right near the sun. But as you get further and further from the sun, the intensity of the light goes down. So this one right here, then, we should say... Um, it's going to be based on uh, a couple of things here. So first of all, um, this one right here, this A, is going to be not just the area that we actually reach on the ground here. It's going to be a little bit weirder looking. So I'll just explain these things here. So power, that's like the uh, luminosity of the sun. And that's going to be measured in watts. In other words, this power that we talk about, that's this L in this equation from astrophysics, which you don't need this equation. Okay, don't worry about it, but I think this one makes more sense. Then we have I, which is the intensity of, uh, let's say, um, the radiation, because uh, we don't mean um, radiation as in radioactivity, we just mean radiation as in light. So the intensity of radiation, uh, we could say that's on Earth, and that's going to be measured in, uh, let's say it's going to be watts per meter squared. And then we have A is the surface area of a sphere. So that's going to be equal to 4 pi r squared. I don't know if you remember that, but that's actually the surface area of any sphere. If you look, that is basically the same equation as this. 
So just to explain a little bit what happens then. The sun itself, it puts out, it emits a certain amount of radiation, okay? And that is in the form of, well, let's, in this case, in astrophysics, we call it luminosity. In our case, for this unit, we call it power. So that's measured in watts. Now, the thing is, though, that radiation, it goes down in intensity based on how far you are. So the light that is uh, emitted from it, it goes all around in a big three-dimensional sphere. So we have to figure out then what's the surface area of that sphere. In other words, you know, what, what is actually reaching us? In other words, where are we? So that's why this A is the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. And then the intensity of the light, well, that's just what we actually receive here on Earth per meter squared. I like the astrophysics version better, though, because its brightness is luminosity over 4 pi r squared. This is apparent brightness. That's what we receive, what we detect on Earth. This is what the sun actually kicks out. And this is just 4 pi r squared, where r is the distance. So as long as you remember, though, that intensity is in watts per meter squared. You've got the power is the luminosity of the sun measured in watts. And you've got A is a surface area of a sphere. Then you're just fine.